Man, maybe I'll do us all a favor and just stick to the cards. The more lighthearted and upbeat closing to Iron Man gets a spin to the dark side with the eerie music and a look at what the repercussions of Iron Man's existence are. Although the MCU keeps coming back to this idea, this was really the first time. So Mickey Rourke has had an interesting career. Not entirely dissimilar from Robert Downey Jr., with his early success, absence, and then re-emergence. So it was actually genius to cast him as someone who covets Stark's life and accomplishments. And the mirroring of the Ark building right down to hammering on an anvil and the fact that they're both the sons of influential geniuses. Psh, anyone could build an Ark reactor from blueprints. Tony had to do it from memory. It almost feels commonplace after this movie that Tony would show up as Iron Man, but this was the first time he really comes out like this. So the misdirect of why he's jumping out of the plane is still a fun one. Man builds personal indestructible flying tank, and the hardest thing to believe is that he doesn't get helmet hair inside there. But I believe it. Tony would be the type of person to spend months on a way to stabilize his quaff. I'm not saying... Never has a greater Phoenix metaphor been personified in human history. Well, he's not saying it, so humility. I haven't come across anyone who's man enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me on my best day. And obviously modesty. Back when we were all just excited to see everyone else recognizing the talent of the Attack of the Show host. Only Favreau would direct this film and cast himself as the star's servant man. This is Larry. Bill Gates in the last film, Larry Ellison in this film, giving these tech giants their day in the sun. When Stan Lee and Larry King look so much alike that 80% of your audience is still searching for the Stan Lee cameo. Also, Kate Mara? Even then, Favreau recognized Zoe Barnes was more than a pretty face. She's also a process server. U.S. Marshal? Exactly. This whole Senate hearing takes on new light knowing that the man leading it is actually Hydra. Yes, I'm giving Feige and Favreau that much credit, because I just don't care. I don't know too much about Justin Hammer, but Sam Rockwell is always a win. I assume you've all watched Mr. Right by now, so now go see Confessions of a Dangerous Mind to truly fall in love with Sam. Just the way Sam delivers his name. I defer to you, Anthony. I expect to see you here. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. <laughs> Directly addressing the Terrence Howard fan base, but still making sense in universe. I believe that's North Korea. Ah, <sighs> nothing more relevant to what's happening right now. The incompetence of North Korea's, let's say, Iron Man suit making skills. No offense to any North Koreans in my audience. Oh wait. To the right. And Strange wouldn't even consider helping that poor Marine. F you, Mr. Stark. F you, buddy. Given the events of Winter Soldier, this actually checks out. Unfortunately, the device that's keeping you alive is also killing you. Well, at least it's murdering you in an aesthetically pleasing way. Do you have the sniffles? I don't want to get sick. I need you to wear a surgical mask <coughs> until you're feeling better. Is that okay? That's rude. This is why I love Robert Downey Jr. He always manages to roll with it. Gwyneth was really sick, so he threw in some lines about it. I mean, this gives actual real continuity to Larry Ellison being in the film since Oracle is sponsoring the Expo, product placement that really makes in-world sense. Also, Expo 362, Xbox 360, eh, eh? Sorry, what the hell was that? It's called mixed martial arts. Favreau couldn't fight MMA when he was dating Monica, he can't do it now. Personal continuity. Side note, if you don't appreciate my obscure friends references, convince my wife to let us stop watching it before bed every night. You can read Latin or you can yeah. write Latin, Did but you, you can't speak Latin too. Because she modeled in Tokyo. Must have been during her love affair with Bill Murray. And the Black Widow scissor head grab move was born. And we all fell in love. Iron Man suitcase, which was actually set up earlier via hologram. Fun fact, Robert Downey Jr. actually sat down with Elon Musk when studying for his role as Tony Stark, since Elon is about as close to a real-life Stark as we have. Or, you know, maybe a real-life Ozymandias. I'm not saying he'll kill millions of people for peace. I just don't know that he won't do that. Elon Musk scares me. Well, she did quite a spread on Tony last year. And she wrote a story as well. Yeah, Journalism burn. Fomage. Say Brie. Seen each oh, other. God, it's so <laughs> awful. <laughs> Steve. What's the Dude, use of having a healthy, an owning healthy a race car competition if you don't drive it? You might be asking why would super rich and famous Tony Stark hop behind the wheel of an F1 race car? Well, as far as he's concerned, he's dying. Quickly. It's confirmed later when he asks Natasha, If this was your last birthday party you were ever going to have, how would you celebrate it? So he's going to live it up while he can. I mean, I'm not sure what that guy ever did to you, but sweet whip trick. Seriously, this is probably the best set piece in the film. Eh, badass bad guy. And yep. Were you heading for me <gasps> or him? I was trying to scare him. I can't tell. Tony Stark. Never wanted to miss an opportunity for some snark, even in death-defying situations. There is some CGI in this sequence, but the Rolls Royce is always practical, even when getting sliced up. And most of the car flips are practical. Great combination of effects. Also, yup, Iron Man suiting up will never get old, and this is even a new take on it. 
So, just a generally exhilarating action set piece with stuff we haven't seen yet. Including Happy and Pepper being involved and helpful in the fight, Whiplash withstanding a little car ramming, the football, and then Iron Man finally winning by using the Whip's attachment to Ivan against him and casually ripping out his reactor. And a little crazy thrown in for good measure. Mickey Rourke's workout routine. Spending two weeks with Edgar right in the brain will make you notice these wipes. I see you, Favreau. I see you. This dude is Mark Cooper. Apologies for pronunciation. And he's very appropriately played Mickey Rourke's stunt double in a bunch of other films, and he's done stunts in a bunch of other MCU films as well. Dude is a win. <laughs> Randy the Ram Robinson, IRL. Fun fact, Sam Rockwell thought that Justin Hammer would be the type to use a self-tanner and that his hands would be stained with it. So, method acting, you know? Usually, me will me Okay. Do you speak English? Because I can get a translator. Very good, man. What he actually said was, if I get killed, do not wake me. It is better to die than live in your world. <laughs> More fun facts, the reactor was supposed to turn on earlier, but the prop failed, so Robert Downey Jr. went with it. Maybe the world wasn't ready for an alcoholic superhero. Or maybe the MCU just wanted to go in a different direction. But they did some really great parallels between the palladium poisoning and the chlorophyll that Tony needs to drink and his alcoholic comic counterpart. And if you're really wondering why Elon Musk has a cameo, this is why. Hammer's warehouse is actually SpaceX. I'll do whatever I wanted to do. With whoever I wanted to do with. When you find out later that she was evaluating him for the Avengers, this flirting and tempting advice makes a lot more sense. The Mark One, which checks out since Obadiah got it back from the Ten Rings in the first film and brought it back to Stark Industries. Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal, but Iron Man doesn't have a sidekick. Well, even Spider-Man might have something to say about that now. A little subtle nod to Natalie actually being Black Widow. Pepper screams in fear and Black Widow takes a defensive stance. No one likes to see friends fight. Unless, of course, it's epic. We don't have to do this, Tony. You want to be the war machine? Clearly he does. Well, according to Mr. Stark's database security guidelines, there are redundancies to prevent unauthorized usage. Love that line and smirk. Of course he could have prevented it. But if he thought he was going to die, who better than to pick up the mantle? And if the government was going to take it, why not let someone you trust to be in control? Subtle genius, really. But try to put your head in there. No, go ahead, try to put your head in there. It's See, Ivan, he can't put his head in there. That's I won't say Sam Rockwell made the best MCU villain, but he's at least the smarmiest. This is a kinetic kill sidewinder vehicle with a secondary cyclotrimethylene trinitramine RDX burst. I guess that probably would have worked on Luke Cage, too. I think I'll take it. Which one? All of it. And the war machine was born. What is and always will be my greatest creation is you. A little heartfelt beyond the grave approval? That'll get you right in the old fields. That I'm allergic, allergic to. to strawberries. This is progress, Pepper. I knew there was a correlation between you and this thoughtfulness attempt. Like a suit rerum spec is. Which means? Wait, what? What'd you just say? It means you can either drive yourself home or I can have you collected. What she actually said was roughly appearances can be deceiving. Recycling attempt. You know what this is? It's exactly what I need to make this work. That's a crappy 70s prop. A remodeling montage is the fastest way to discover a new element. And this time it's a triangle shape, so as not to be confused with the palladium reactor. No matter how much technology and mental prowess you possess, eventually it comes down to a huge pipe wrench and raw bicep power. So clearly, Robert Downey Jr.'s workout routine. I don't know if you know this, but I don't speak Russian! This time, it's very expectedly, you talk too much. I don't know what it is about not showing the actual act of how Ivan got his hands covered in blood, or how those two dead guys ended up hanging. Last time, we got a detailed look of him quickly picking up on someone else's plan and escaping like a boss. So this time, it just makes him even more intimidating. He just wanted to make a quick call. So, wait, does this make it hammer time? He did say they'd salute. Well, what can you make them do? I mean, this is a weapons demonstration. I can make salute. For sort of a tertiary type villain, the drones are still well thought out with each military branch having specialized skills. Things like outriggers for stability on the anti-aircraft guns add some realism back in. Nice work, kid. Saving mini Iron Man. I mean, Spider-Man? Yeah, apparently that's Peter Parker. I don't know, ask Tom Holland. Yup or more evidence for the need of some Honda Accords. <laughs> All right, first look at the real Black Widow does not disappoint. So just like, give her her own movie. I remember someone really intelligent mentioning a Black Widow slash Hulk rom-com. 
I guess Ragnarok is as close as we're gonna get, huh? <laughs> All right, Happy Tice, I mean Hogan. I will say, one thing the lack of a whole bunch of action scenes does is make this chase leading up to the final confrontation a lot more engaging and fun. I am Matt. Fending off a hammeroid attack. Come on, hammeroid? Not even a chuckle pepper? Natasha? Happy? Ivan? Thank you. I won't lie. I don't hate the juxtaposition of a beautiful babbling brook with Japanese cherry blossoms and a quaint bridge about to be destroyed by some serious hardware. And as far as an escalation of the final battle that these films are required to have, Ironmonger ain't got nothing on two suits against unending drones. And Favreau was able to get his bloodbath finished using robots instead of humans complete with oil splatter on Rhodey's face. The sound design allowing both Iron Man's distinct pulse sounds and War Machine's miniguns is really engrossing. And that's a yup weapon. And if you find yourself sitting there asking, well, why didn't he use that at the beginning? It's clearly a one-time shot from energy usage and requires the baddies to be at least in a similar plane and proximity to have maximum destruction. I think you should lead with that next time. Yeah, sorry boss, I can only use it once. It's a one-off. See? Hammer tech? Yeah. Sometimes Chekhov's gun is a dud. I don't blame you for wishing this fight had a bit more to it, but I also don't blame Favreau for keeping it brief when the last film ended with a big suit v suit battle. And of course, teamwork. Which is a fun callback to the first time they did this when Tony was trying to convince himself he didn't need anybody. And saving your pepper. Love. I know, the build to this wasn't perfect. But since it was started in Iron Man 1, it's still rewarding to see them together on a roof again. You guys look like two seals fighting over a grape. But that'll never leave my brain. Narcissism? Agreed. Introspection? That's gotta be Wakanda, no? Thor. Yes, setting up the MCU is still a win in my book. There isn't a whole lot to say about Iron Man 2 that hasn't been said. It's not Iron Man 1, it's probably not even Iron Man 3. And unfortunately, when you put out a revolutionary film like the first Iron Man, the expectations are super high and being off the mark by even a hair would get you some rough press. How do you recapture the first suit, Donnie? You don't. You just, you can't. My problem isn't that the story is convoluted or has too many things going on. It just sort of is. More than you know. Not that much. As a whole, it has a bit of an empty feeling. It's sort of a bridge film between Iron Man and Avengers. But that doesn't really bother me. If you're like me, you're interested in Tony Stark and Iron Man's story, even if it's a tad lackluster. I don't care about the liberal agenda anymore. And I didn't find the plot all that convoluted anyway. Whiplash has a vendetta, and then he accomplishes his goal. If you can make God bleed, then people will cease to believe in him and then Hammer picks him up to destroy Tony. Ivan then expands his purpose. All this while Tony deals with his own mortality and feelings for Pepper. I even appreciate that he doesn't fully reveal his love for Pepper until after he's out of the woods. I really enjoy him reconnecting with his dead father and uncovering the mystery that he laid out for Tony. This film is about the sins of the father and what legacy you leave behind. Whiplash and Iron Man are two sides of the same coin, geniuses trying to live up to their fathers. The details in this film were actually better than the overall story. Mickey Rourke's Whiplash is amazing just quiet and detached from reality enough to always leave you wondering if Tony can actually stop him. Always one step ahead of Tony and even his boss Hammer. And Mickey Rourke took the time to perfect his few Russian lines. It's sad that a lot of him ended up on the cutting room floor, but Justin Hammer did not disappoint. You know how I feel about Sam Rockwell. Guy Pierce is great in three, but sometimes I almost wish they swapped roles or if Hammer continued on. Rockwell just has this presence about him. It's intoxicating. Never mind. I Otherwise, Scarlett Johansson's intro as Black Widow was really fun and opened up the film to the MCU a little more. It's hard to remember how small it was at this time. It was so exciting to see it expand. It's a bit redundant at this point, especially given that I've done a bunch of films set after this one, but Robert Downey Jr. is phenomenal. He's still the best thing happening in the Iron Man franchise, and one of the best things in the MCU overall. He bounces back and forth between comedy and sincere, heartfelt emotion like few can. Are you Iron Man? Fuck off. That tastes like coconut. A constant theme for Tony is his struggle between Iron Man and Tony Stark. Sometimes it's a literal battle when donning the suit and using the Palladium Reactor is what's killing him. Sometimes it's an internal battle between his public persona as both entities. It's unique in that superheroes usually have one public and one private or secret identity. Tony has to be on all the time no matter where he is or who he's with. I think the one thing this film does well is build a believable relationship for Pepper and Tony since she's his only respite. And even though Tony learns to serve a greater goal in the first film, he's still not going to be Superman. He's not a Boy Scout, and he's still a narcissist. He struggles with his responsibility just like any normal billionaire genius philanthropist inventor would. Just like I'm sure Elon Musk is fighting the urge to take over the world, but his supervillain name just won't let him. Next week is not Kong Skull Island. Not yet, at least. Just need to throw that out there. But don't worry, Jordan. It's on my list. Can I call you Jordan? If I showed you this picture of me from last year, could I call you Jordan? Even if my beard was much shorter now? I like your beard, Jordan. 
I like your films too. Again, this has nothing to do with next week. Just please do right by Hideo Kojima and Metal Gear Solid. That is all. Look at the biggest gun up on that ridge. Gotcha. Where do you want to be? Where are you going? What are you talking about? I mean, you have me. a big gun. You are not the big gun. Tony, don't be jealous. No, it's subtle, all the bells and whistles. Yeah, it's called being a badass. Fine.